do you think in order to solve intelligence or to do to replace the Lex bot that does interviews, as we started this conversation with, do you think the system needs to be sentient? Do you think it needs to achieve something like consciousness? And do you think about what consciousness is in the human mind that could be instructive for creating AI systems? Yeah, honestly, I think probably not to to the degree of intelligence that there's this brain that can learn, can be extremely useful, can challenge you, can teach you. Um, conversely, you can teach it to do things. I'm not sure it's necessary, personally speaking, um, but if consciousness or any other biological or evolutionary lesson can be repurposed to then influence our next set of algorithms, that is a great that is a great way to actually make progress, right? And the same way I try to explain Transformers a bit how it feels we operate when we look at text specifically. Um, these insights are very important, right? So there's a distinction between um, details of how the brain might be doing computation. Um, I think my understanding is, sure, there's neurons and there's some resemblance to neural networks, but we don't quite understand enough of the brain in detail right to to be able to replicate it but then more if you if you zoom out a bit how we then our thought process how memory works um maybe even how evolution got us here what's exploration exploitation like all the how these things happen i think these clearly can inform algorithmic level research and i've seen some examples um of this being quite useful to then guide the research, even it might be for the wrong reasons, right? So I think um, biology and what we know about ourselves can help a whole lot to build um, essentially like what we call AGI, this this general, um, the the real gato, right? The, the the last step of the chain, hopefully. But um, but consciousness in particular, I don't I don't myself at least think too hard about how to add that to to the system. But maybe. Maybe my understanding is also very personal about what it means, right? I think this even even that in itself is a long debate that I know people uh, people have often, um, and maybe I, I should learn more about this. Yeah, and I personally, I notice the magic often on a personal level, especially with physical systems mm -hmm. with like robots. I have a lot of uh, legged robots now in Austin that I play with, and even when you program them, when they do things you didn't expect there's an immediate anthropomorphization and you notice the magic and you start to think about things like sentience that has to do more with effective communication and less with any of these kind of dramatic things. It it, um, it seems like a useful part of communication. Ha having the perception of consciousness seems like useful for us humans. We, we, we treat each other more seriously. We are able to uh, do a nearest neighbor shoving of that entity into your memory correctly, all that kind of stuff. It seems useful, at least to fake it, even if you never make it. So maybe like, yeah, mirroring the question, and since you talk to a few people, do you, then you do think that we'll need to figure something out in order to achieve intelligence in a grander sense of the world? Or yeah, I, I personally believe yes, but I don't even think it'll be like a separate island we'll have to travel to. Mm. I think it'll emerge quite naturally. Okay, it's, that's easier than uh, for <laughs> us then, thank you. <laughs> it, but no, the reason I think it's important to think about is you will start, I believe, like with this Google engineer, you will start seeing this a lot more, especially when you have AI systems that are actually interacting with human beings that don't have an engineering background. And we have to prepare for that. Because there'll be, I do believe there'll be a civil rights movement for robots, as silly mm -hmm. as, as it is to say. There's going to be a large number of people that realize there's these intelligent entities with, with whom I have a deep relationship and I don't wanna lose them. They've come to be a part of my life and they mean a lot. They have a name, they have a story, they have a memory. And we start to ask questions about ourselves. Well, what uh, this thing sure seems like it's capable of suffering because it tells all these stories of suffering. It doesn't want to die and all those kinds of things. And we have to start to ask ourselves questions. Well, what is the difference between a human being and this thing? And wait, so when you engineer, I believe 
from an engineering perspective, from like a deep mind or anybody that builds systems, there might be laws in the future where you're not allowed to engineer systems with uh, displays of sentience uh, un unless they're explicitly designed to be that, unless it's a pet. So if you, if, you, if you have a system that's just doing customer support, you're legally not allowed to display sentience. So we'll start to like ask ourselves that question. And then so that that's, that's going to be part of the software engineering process. Do we, do we, which features do we have? And one of them is communications of sentience. But it's important to start thinking about that stuff, especially how much it captivates public attention. Yeah, so absolutely. It's, a, it's definitely a topic that is important we think about. And I think in a way, I I always see not not I mean not not every movie is 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 equally on point with certain things, but certainly science fiction in this sense at least has prepared society to to start thinking about certain topics that even if it's too early to talk about, as long as we are like reasonable, um, it's certainly gonna prepare us for for both um, the research to come and how to I mean there's many important challenges and and topics that. Um, come with with building an intelligent system, many of which you you just mentioned, right? So, I think being we're never gonna be um, fully ready unless we talk about these and we start also, as I said, just kind of expanding the 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 people we talk to to not include only our our own researchers and so on. And in fact, places like DeepMind, but elsewhere, there's more interdisciplinary groups forming up to start asking and really working with us on these questions. Um, because obviously this is not initially what your passion is when you do your PhD, but certainly it is coming, right? So it's it's fascinating kind of, it's it's the, the thing that brings me to one of my passions that is learning. So the, in this sense, this is kind of a new area that as a learning system myself, I want to keep exploring. And I think it's it's great that um, to see, you know, parts of the debate and and even I seen a level of maturity in the conferences that deal with AI. If you look five years ago um, to now, just the amount of workshops and so on has changed so much. It's, it's impressive to see how much topics of, um, you know, safety, ethics and so on come to, to the surface, which is great. And if we were too early, clearly it's fine. I mean, it's a big field and there's lots of people um, with lots of um, interest that will do progress or make progress. Um, and obviously, I don't believe we're too late. So that in, the, in that sense, like I think it's great that we're doing this already.